Welcome back to the energy conversion lectures. In a previous lecture, I have talked about the hysteresis loss of the magnetic circuit. In this lecture, I will cover another type of magnetic circuit power loss, which is called eddy current loss. This type of power loss occurs when the magnetic field lines phi changes at high frequency or rapidly such as in AC machines, transformers, and high-frequency devices. Since the magnetic materials, such as iron, are also a good conductor, the time variation of magnetic field inside the core will cause a flow of eddy currents inside the core. These currents are the cause of the eddy current power loss which dissipated as a heat. Now let's give more details. Assume we have the following magnetic circuit and it is supplied by an AC source. Also, let's cut the core at point X and look at the zoomed in cross-sectional area of the core as shown. When the magnetic field phi is changing or increasing at certain time, assume in the following direction, it will create an induced EMF voltages at some points along closed path according to Faraday's law. The EMF voltages can be thought of an ideal batteries placed in the loop. This EMF will cause a circulating current called eddy current. Of course, the eddy current is different from the current I flowing through the coil. The induced back EMF voltages polarity that causes the eddy current can be identified by Lin's law as follows. Draw a magnetic field phi O opposite to the original magnetic field phi in the core as shown by the dotted line. Based on this dotted opposite magnetic field, the direction of the eddy current can be easily identified by using the right hand rule. Therefore, the induced voltage that caused the eddy current must be in this direction as shown. The amount of energy lost due to the eddy currents depends on the size of the eddy current loops and the resistivity of the material in which the current flow. The larger the induced voltage, the larger the current loop size and therefore greater the I square R losses will be. On the other hand, the greater the resistivity of the material containing the current, the lower the current flow will be for a given induced voltage in the loop and then lower loss. These facts give us two possible approaches to reduce the eddy current losses that results from the large eddy current loss path. The first approach is using laminated core. If the magnetic core that's subject to an alternating magnetic field is broken up into many small lamination or strips, then the maximum size of the current loop will be reduced, resulting in lower induced voltage and a lower current loop and therefore lower losses. The reduction of power loss is proportional to the width of these laminations. So smaller laminations are better. An insulation resin or varnish is used between the laminations so that the current path for the eddy current is limited to very small area. Because the insulation layers are extremely thin, this action reduces eddy current losses with very little effect on the core's magnetic properties. The second approach of reducing the eddy current losses is to increase the resistivity of the core material. This is often done by adding some silicon to the steel of the core. If the resistance of the core is higher, 
the eddy currents will be smaller for a given magnetic field and the resulting I square R losses will be smaller. In many cases, both approaches, laminated core and adding silicon are combined. Therefore, the lamination of high resistivity materials can be used to control the eddy currents. Together, they can reduce eddy current losses to the point where they are much smaller than the hysteresis losses of the core. It must be mentioned here that the humming noise that we hear near the unenergized transformer is due to the vibrations of these laminations against each other due to the changing magnetic field. The lamination thickness is usually between 0.5 to 5 mm for machines and transformers at the line frequency and between 0.01 to 0.5 mm for high frequency devices. Eddy current power loss can be calculated by two methods. The first method is by using finite element analysis using software such as ANSYS, Maxwell, and FEMBLAB. The second method is by using following empirical law. PE equal V core multiplied by KE multiplied by F to the power 2 multiplied by B max to the power 2 and the unit watt. Where PE is the eddy current loss, V core is the volume of the core, KE is a constant determined by the nature of the magnetic material and F is the operating frequency and B max is the maximum magnetic field density. Assuming the core volume is constant, it is very clear that the eddy current loss is depending on the square of the operating frequency and the square of the maximum magnetic field density. Just to add here that this empirical law is developed by performing too many tests and experiments. Basically, these experiments are performed by changing the input of the magnetic circuit, which are current and frequency. These inputs produce magnetic field with certain frequencies. By measuring the input and output power, while the inputs are changing in different steps, some formula can be developed as the one above mentioned of the eddy current power loss. Magnetic material that are used for magnetic cores of inductors, machines, and transformers can be categorized into two broad classes. One class of material are comprised of alloys or mix of iron and small amount of other elements including chrome and silicon. These alloys have large electrical conductivity and large values of saturation magnetic field density B near to 1.8 Tesla. Two types of loss are found in iron alloy materials, hysteresis and eddy current loss. These types of material are usually used in low frequency applications below 2 kHz because of the eddy current loss. Iron alloy must be laminated to reduce the eddy current loss. The second broad class of materials used for cores is ferrites. Ferrite materials are basically oxide mixture of iron and other magnetic elements. They have quite large electrical resistivity but rather low saturation magnetic field density B, typically 0.3 Tesla. Ferrites have only hysteresis loss, no significant eddy current loss because of the high electrical resistivity. Ferrites are materials of choice for cores that operate at high frequencies greater than 10 kHz because of the low eddy current loss. It should be noted here that the sum of the hysteresis and eddy current loss is called the core loss of the magnetic circuit. Since this power loss is dissipated as a heat, 
the core loss can be modeled as a resistance RC in the equivalent electrical circuit. Let's conclude this lecture at this point. Thanks for listening. I am Ihsan Al Nabi, and it was a pleasure sharing this lecture with you. Thank you.